Hi there, this is Seth Chaver from Team Just Cause Robotics, and in today's video I'll be talking about the progress that I've made over the last week on my three pound saw robot shrapnel mine. You might be thinking, huh, this is different, you don't usually talk to camera, and that's because I am way too burnt out from having been testing for more than eight hours a day both of the last two days this weekend. I figured it would be easier for me to just talk to camera and show the things that I want to show on camera instead of having to edit together a bunch of clips that I take with like really fancy b-roll and everything. Though I can still splice in some clips that I did shoot earlier that show the weapon testing and drive testing I've been doing. Today's video is going to be about the process of designing my three pound robot shrapnel mine, focusing this time primarily on the drive train. So with this video, I want to try and talk about the process that I went through of designing and iterating and testing out different parts of the robot. So last video, I focused on the saw and the front hinge mechanism. And this time around, I was biting off a bit more than I could chew because I was kind of trying to work on two things at once. I was trying to work on this drive testing bed at the same time as I was still trying to refine the actual you know, front hinge uh, forky bit. And on top of all of that, also testing out cutting things with the AR500 laser cut metal saws that I now have from Send Cut Send. Thank you to our project sponsor, Send Cut Send, for these, by the way, they're pretty sick. Um, got a whole set of different blades. When I eventually have an entire robot, I'll be using this saw, which isn't actually a saw, it's just a metal disc for uh, driving it around outside of a test box because it's way too unsafe to uh, have a spinny metal toothed object while I'm driving it outside of a test box. And then I'll use actual saw blades for when I want to cut things inside of my test box. I have some footage of that. Um, it does work, but it doesn't work well yet. There's a number of things I have to work on, so this was the result of most of my testing here. Uh, it, it definitely cuts through uh, 3D printed nylon like butter when given the op opportunity, but it was only given the opportunity to some extent before my arm broke in half, so that wasn't super fun. But I have here the remains of that arm that snapped straight in half, and I can show in my video how that happened very suddenly and unexpectedly and I had no idea what went wrong until reviewing the footage a bit. I still don't quite know exactly what went wrong, but it seems as though a number of different things happened that led to that failure. But I think I'm going to mainly focus on the weapon testing in a separate video, and here, focus on the drivetrain. So when I was planning out this robot, I had, I gave myself basically two different options. Option number one for the drive, was to reuse Division's drive system because that works well and it's reliable and I know that that works. Uh, the issues with that are that I originally wanted to try and doubly support the axles the wheels are driving on so I could have a support both on the inside like you see here and also another support on the outside. Uh, I didn't realize how wide I wanted the wheels to be at the time so maybe I'll just leave it like this to some extent. Um, the second reason I didn't want to necessarily copy that was because I figured I could possibly use the same exact motor for both the weapon and the drive, and that would allow me 
to not have to buy so many different types of motors as spares or have like one set of the 1806 motors dedicated to division and a second set dedicated to this robot when those have become harder to find now. I used to be able to find them for like five bucks and now it's like 15 each, which is about how much these motors cost that I have on here. But these motors are way more powerful. So the stall current of the motors I have on division is like seven amps, whereas these can go up to maybe 20 or 30 amps. So yeah, basically I was thinking I could get a lot more torque for being a control bot that needs to be able to push other robots around by using a bigger motor and have the same one for the weapon so that I had fewer different types of motors that I would need to stock. And I'm also using the same exact speed controllers for the drive and the weapon on this bot and the drive on Division and the weapon on my Antweight Mini Mulcher. So I have even few spares from the motor controller side. They're pretty small and lightweight and they have plenty of power for a motor like this that can't push past around 30 amps at stall. So there are a couple different aspects of this drive that I needed to work out. Number one was how exactly am I going to support the wheels? And number two was how am I going to gear it down enough that I actually get enough pushing power and enough torque to move not just my robot but other robots around instead of having just a really high speed from just the motor. So I basically decided to copy the gearing that I have on my Antweight Mini Mulcher's weapon. And I turned those single slant uh, helical gears into uh, doubly slanted herringbone gears, which basically you can see this like chevron pattern on the gear teeth. That's all that that refers to. Essentially, this means that the gear can't pull out or push in any further than it is constrained by the other one that's meshed with. And that also gives me more service area on the tooth than a straight tooth gear would, like a standard uh, spur gear might. So I can maximize the strength of my 3D printed gears by having these slanted teeth with more surface area of the root of the tooth, and in theory get more torque with the same size gear and not have to make a wider one. Um, as you can see, these wheels are extremely wide though. These are actually cast polyurethane shred onto a PTG 3D printed hub, two different hubs. You can see one of them is a much narrower tread than the other. I realized after making these that I would probably want the hub to be smaller and have more rubber on the outside because it starts to wear down a bit. So I made these. They're very, very similar. This is what the hubs look like without a tread molded onto them. You can see these divots here. It's hard to tell from just looking at it here, but you can see in the CAD model that they are essentially V-shaped or dovetail-shaped grooves. So the plat uh, rubber can flow into those gaps, but it can't pull out once it cures. And it also can't slide side to side, can't pull out, and can't slide, you know, around it so that the tire actually moves with the hub instead of it sliding off of it. That way I can actually drive. So you can see these two almost identical hubs. Just this one is a slightly larger diameter than this one. So this one gives more rubber with the same exact mold. So just pop the tire in there, and then you can pour rubber around this outside lip and mold a wheel tread onto it. I might change up the tread later because I think this like bumpier, like it's basically like I've got like vertical lines carved out. I think that might be bad because it's kind of a bumpy texture. I can fix that by trying to add like a slight twist so it's kind of more of like a helix shape. As long as I twist it enough that I mesh where the start of one bump is to where the start of the next bump is, it'll basically make it so if you look from the side, the wheel is now a circle instead of a bumpy like gear tooth design. So I think that should help with the bouncing issue, but it probably won't have a huge impact on the traction. And all I have to do to do that is just print a new mold. This mold is printed in the same material, just a PETG, and because it's straight walled, you just have to be able to push the hub out once the rubber cures. So I just spray mold release all around the inside. I have a whole video showing how I did this with my 12 pound robot. Spray mold release all around the inside of the mold, stick the hub in, no mold release on the hub. And then once it's cured, I can push it out with this little tool that I designed and printed. It just goes in here and then you can push straight up and pull it out. It's, you know, like less than a dollar's worth of rubber compound 
to make one of these. If you wanted a, a closer look at the test bed I'm using for drive, this is literally an old version of Division's base plate that I cut out on a ShopBot CNC router, which is definitely not meant for cutting aluminum. You can see it like melted the aluminum in a few places and it just like reformed into a mess that made this basically unusable. I thought it might have some use like this someday. And then I have these two HackRC uh, BL Heli 32 35 amp speed controllers. I have the same ones on the saw and the same motors now on both drive and the saw. So I found out that because the drone motors come with left hand threaded nuts, I thought I couldn't use those at first because the nuts have a flange, but it turns out they're actually made of aluminum. So I was able to take a hand file to this one and just file off the flange. And this is a left hand threaded motor, whereas this one's a right hand threaded motor. You can see that they're meant to spin in opposite directions with reference to the motor, but the same direction with reference to the wheels in this case, which is kind of nice. Not that it matters, the performance should be the same in both spinning directions anyway. Um, then I have 3D printed PETG wheels and gears and cast urethane tires. Uh, strangely, this one is a uh, black dye and this one is a supposedly like a shadow gray. This one's supposed to be pitch black, but after wearing in on the floor a bit, it, they look basically almost the same. Oh, also this wheel has more tread. Either way, it has a lot more depth in terms of like rubber instead of uh, plastic. So that uh, wears and I can still use it. But the, the overall diameter of the wheels didn't change. Just this hub is smaller. The hub itself is smaller. And they are mounted on this thing, these 3D printed pieces. There's like mirrored copies of them, one for each side. And this piece allows the motor to go on here. It gets screwed on. And the shaft is here. The shaft is just a uh, shoulder bolt like this, but a longer one. And right now I'm using ones that are made of plastic, but I definitely am gonna switch to uh, steel like this one so that it's a lot stronger. I might end up trying to make this whole piece out of something a lot stronger than uh, PETG. I might go carbon fiber nylon or potentially even try and get a machined aluminum version of this made or make it myself. Um, I'm not sure how stiff I can get this to be with plastic. I have a hex bore on the opposite side. You can stick a steel nut into it to make it, you know, pull tight this way. But that doesn't necessarily prevent it from wobbling, which is kind of a problem. And also if another horizontal spinner came by and like hit the end of the axle, it would just put a tremendous torque on this and probably destroy pretty much anything made of any kind of plastic on this end. So that is definitely a concern as well. Uh, but yeah. Pretty much just wanted to, to verify that this can work at all, and also with the weight distribution, that it wouldn't be completely undrivable. So I tried duct taping some uh, soda cans onto this, and driving around like that, to simulate what the robot would be like if it had A, a lot of weight in front, in front of the wheel axles, and B, also what it would be like to have that weight really like close to the actual three pounds that it will be when it's you know, got all the rest of the armor and electronics and crap on here for an actual robot. So I got it up to more than two and a half pounds, but then the problem I had was like I was trying to drive it this way at first and you know, without high ground clearance. So it was just like flexing and the tape isn't super stiff, so these will just lift and that was bad. So then I started running it upside down, I just taped this thing here to the front just to make it so that the points that touched the floor were not the electronics, and then ran into a host of other issues, tape coming loose like this, and accidentally drove it into a soda can, pierced it, and sprayed soda everywhere, so that wasn't super fun. Ultimately though, it seems like this should work. It's good enough. It's got enough power and enough grip, so I think I'm going to move forward with trying to, to use this drivetrain setup, but just modify the design to potentially be made out of metal or uh, just in general be way stiffer and better able to support this axle. I might even try to uh, use longer shoulder bolts that stick into the plastic more so that it's supported more like further back and that way it can't wiggle at nearly as much as it can now. 
And I hope all of those things together will make it so that it can actually hold up to a couple of hits in an actual uh, competition. Uh, you'll also notice these hubs have a decent amount of material removed from the middle, but these things are, are surprisingly durable as is, like I could stand on this and it's basically fine. It's surprisingly stiff radially. So I might actually make these hubs themselves out of a flexible TPU filament so that if the wheel takes a hit, this kind of just crumples and absorbs a lot of that energy instead of it transferring all of that energy straight into the axle and snapping it in half. So yeah, a lot of this engineering process is just ultimately trial and error. And it can be frustrating at times when things don't work out the first, second, third time that you try them. And I just don't have enough time to keep 3D printing prototypes and testing them and then still have any time to actually film something this weekend. So that's why I'm doing this video like this now, instead of waiting because, I mean, next weekend is gonna be Norwalk Havoc where I'll be fighting with Division. And there's no way that I'll have time to be working on this robot while I am trying to get Division ready next week. So hopefully this video is still helpful to any of you who are interested in the process that I'm going through to design Shrapnel Mine, the new three pound bot. And I hope that this, you know, isn't completely boring for every one of you to watch and isn't so removed from my normal content that no one actually wants to watch it. But I guess we'll just have to see. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like. If you like to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.